Duxiada, Nura Din, Nura Din Iskulis. Okay, welcome back to our video lessons. Today we, go, we are going to talk about subject verb agreement. It's very important and in, uh, in terms of writing and in terms of speaking. Subject verb agreement is, is the subject must agree. Subject and verb must agree in number. If there is a, a disagreement between subject and verb, all the, there is a lot of errors. So today we're going to focus on subject verb agreement. It's very important. Before we start our lesson, what are the objectives of our lesson? Students, at the end of this lesson, you will define subject verb agreement. Use the subject and its verb correctly. Study the agreement between subject and its verb in number. So this is class form four, and the lesson is subject verb agreement. Let's, so what is subject verb agreement? Subject verb agreement. Subject and verb agreement is very simple. Subject, verb must agree the subject, uh, the, ob the verb in number. Subject must agree the verb is number. Subject verb agreement means that subjects and verbs must always agree in number. Not only does a verb change its form to tell time, but it also can change its form to indicate how many subjects it has. So if your, sub, if, you, if your subject is singular, your verb becomes singular. If your uh, subject is plural, your verb becomes plural. That is our topic. Subject and verb must agree in number. What is that, the number? Number is not one, two, three, but it's singular and plural. So subject, subject and verb must agree in number. Use verb is singular in this. The dog backs. For example, the dog backs, the teacher says, dog is a singular and feb with s is a singular. The teacher is singular and the feb say, says is a singular. So, plural subjects use verb, verbs with plural indices. The dog back. The dog's, dog is plural, so back we don't use s. Teacher say, teacher say, teacher says, but teacher say, Teacher is plural, so we leave the, 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 uh, the S. So all in all, subject must agree in number. What about rules of subject verb agreement? We, today we're going to talk about, we're, we're going to take subject, uh, subject verb agreement rules. It has rules, very important rules. It helps you your writing and your uh, uh, and you're speaking. Compound subject joined by an, compound subject joined by an, two or more subject, two or more subject joined by an are considered plural and require a verb plural uh, without s. So if you have two subject, two uh, 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 compound subject joined by an, we're going to use plural verb. Asha and Ali are. Asha and Ali are. Don't say Asha and Ali is. Because Asha and Ali is the subject, doer of the action. So we're going to use are, or were, or have. So two or more subjects joined by an, we're going to use consider plural and require a verb form without s. For example, John, J uh, John Jane, and Bob walk to the store. John, uh, Chan, Chan, Chon, and Bob are plural. They are, they are plural because we're going to use, we, we use uh, and. Bob and his brother is wall to the store. So they are combo subject, joined by and. So they are plural. When they are combo subject by, uh, by and, but represent a single idea, single idea or person, the combo subject is interested as a unit subject. Joined by and it's a singular, uh, uh, singular verb, excuse you. 
If you are talking about idea, not people, but if you are talking about idea, uh, we're going to use singular verb. Like ham, for example, ham and X is a plural breakfast dish. Ham and eggs, only one food. Ham and eggs is a popular, uh, popular, not popular, popular. So ham and eggs is a popular breakfast dish. So if you have an idea, this is unit idea. It's a, uh, it's a unit, unit subject, joined by an. So we're not talking about two people, but we are talking about only food. Ham and eggs, ham and eggs refers to a single dish. We are talking about single dish. So if you are talking about single dish, we're gonna use uh, uh, we're gonna use uh, a singular verb. If the subject is modified by words each and every, that subject is a singular. If you have each and every in your subject, thus the verb becomes plural. For example. I will take a, a verb that ends in S. For example, each boy and girl. Each boy, each boy and girl walks to the store. Each boy, not boy and girl, we're not talking about, but each boy and each girl and, and girl walks to the store. So this verb walks is a singular, is a singular. Or each boy and each girl is uh, responsible for this country, Somalia. So, if you are talking about uh, uh, if you are talking about a boy and girl, that's another uh, another uh, another idea. But now, each boy and each girl is the verb becomes a singular. Each and every. When you are when you are using each and every. Another example: every student and teacher individually. What what? We're, we're talking about individually. Every student and teacher has to wear a uniform. So every teacher is not every teacher, but every student and every teacher has, has, wear, has to wear a uniform. So if you have a every in your subject, singular, you're going to use a singular verb, has. The singular verb has agrees with every they, uh, every, not student and teacher, but we are talking about every. So if you have these two points, it's very, uh, very important two points. If you have a single idea joined by an, we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna use singular verb. Is, uh, is, uh, has, does, etc. If you have uh, every and has, uh, every and each in your subject, in your, in your subject, singular. We're going to use a singular verb. Compound subject join it by and. Compound subject join it by. Join it by or. Join it by or. In our uh, previous uh, slide, we, we were talking about uh, uh, we were talking about and, but now we are talking about or. Compound subjects join it by or or by either or or neither nor but may take a singular verb or plural verb. When you are going to use either or, or neither or, neither nor, or but, we're gonna use either singular verb or plural verb. When both subjects, remember, when the both subjects are singular, if the both subjects are singular, use a singular verb. If, bo if both subjects are plural, use plural verb. Either Sarah or Tom. Look at the example. Either Sarah, Sarah or Tom has the exam schedule. So if you have either uh, uh, or Tom and Sarah, you, you are considered Tom. Or, so you're going to use has. Has is a singular verb. So both Sarah and Tom are singular and agree with the singular verb has. They agree with the singular verb has. So, uh, but either Sarah or Tom has the exam schedule. It means that to, we, we consider Tom and Sarah as a singular because we use either uh, uh, or, or individual.
one one not an but if you say an this becomes have so either Zara or Tom has exam schedule both Zara and both Zara and Tom agree with the singular verb the singular verb has neither snakes this bulula neither snakes nor rats are considered good bats snakes and rats are bulula so both this compound uh, joined by uh, uh, neither nor these two combo subject uh, combo subject joined by uh, neither nor are bulula so since they are bulula we're going to use bulula verb so uh, neither uh, uh, for example neither uh, uh, teachers nor students are good or uh, neither uh, uh, neither uh, fighting neither uh, lions nor tigers are no, are good or are not good for example so neither snakes nor rats are considered good bats okay it's negative snakes and rats are pulula so they agree with the polar verb are so we're going to use are when one subject is singular and the other remember and the other is polula when one subject is singular when one subject when uh, when one subject is singular and the other is polular the verb agrees with the subject that is closest to it if we we, we already uh, uh, I, I already taught you two singular subjects and two polar subject so if two if you have two polar subjects uh, two singular subject join it by and uh, i mean join it by either or or neither nor we get a singular verb and uh, if you have two subjects join it by neither nor or either or but they are polar we're going to use a uh, uh, polar verb but what about when the subject is singular and the other is polar one subject singular these two compound nouns or compound pronouns one is singular and one is polar how are we going to use we have to consider the the closest to it the one that is closest to the verb nearer to the verb for example either the ra- the cats either the cats cats is singular or the dog or the dog either the cats you have two two uh, uh, combo subject cat is and the dog two either the cats or the dog is responsible for the mess okay since you don't consider the cats but you have to consider the, the dog because the dog is closest to the uh, to the verb is so the verb is do not say are but if the cat if you say either the the dog or the cats here becomes are so either the the cats or the dog is responsible for the mess the singular subject dog is closest to the verb so the singular verb is using remember the singular verb subject dog is closest to the verb so the singular verb is used so we're going to use is what about either the teacher or the students this is the teacher okay and this are the students so teacher is a singular verb is a singular subject and the student is a singular subject uh, it's a polar subject so either the teacher or the students we have to consider and give the main priority the students we don't consider the teacher so the correct answer is the, either the teacher or the students are bringing the books are bringing the books so the polar subject students is closest to the verb is closest to the verb so a polar verb is used polar verb is used remember so how many how how many points did, did we cover now are we covering we cover it if you have if you have main points if you have two sim, uh, combo subject they are polar you're going to use polar verb but if they are singular join it by either or or neither nor we're going to use a singular verb what about is if one is singular and one is plural you consider the the one that is closest to the verb that is closest to the verb okay indefinite pronouns as a subject indefinite pronouns as a, as a subject
Indifferent pronouns as a subject. A verb must agree in number. A verb must agree in number with an indifferent pronouns. Pronouns that do not refer to a particular person, thing, or group. If someone asks you, what is indefinite pronouns? Pronouns that do not refer to a particular person, thing, or idea. So everyone, if you say everyone, everything, every uh, uh, body, they are singular. Everyone walks to the shore. So everyone is a singular, we consider singular, so this is a singular verb. If you have singular for a subject, we're going to use singular verb. If you have a bullet uh, subject, we're going to use bullet verb. Everything comes back eventually. Everything comes back eventually. So if the verb has S, it's a singular. Everything comes back eventually. Everyone in the office is invited. Is invited. Everyone in the office is invited to the charity benefit. So everyone is always singular and agrees with the singular verb. So we're going to use singular verb. Indifferent pronoun is that always take a singular verb. Indifferent pronoun is that always take a singular verb are this one. Anybody, anyone, anything, each, either, everybody, everyone, everything, neither, nobody, no one, nothing, one, somebody, someone, or something. All these, they are, they are indefinite pronouns. So they are singular verb. We're going to use singular verb because they are singular. They are singular verbs. They are singular. Since they are singular, we're going to use singular verb. Everybody has not have. Everybody is. Everybody was. Everything was like that. So, some indefinite pronouns are plural. What are they? Some indefinite pronouns are plural and take a plural verbs. Always this one, both, few, fewer, money, other, others, and several. They are indefinite pronouns, but they are plural. They are plural. So we're going to use, since they are plural, we're going to use plural verbs. For example, several students. Don't say several students. Several students are. So several students are plural. So we're going to use are, are attending the history lecture sovereign is always bullular is always bullular so we're going to use bullular verb several students are attending the history lecture sovereign is always bullular and agrees with the bullular verb other indefinite pronouns can be either singular or plural depending on the noun they are referred to the singular or the plural like all, any, have, more, must, uh, no, none, and some. Okay, you can use either a singular or plural. It depends on the context. For example, all the food is, food is uncountable. All the people are, because are is countable, uh, countable. But food is uncountable now. The today's lesson. So I say to you, good luck. And thank you very much for your watching. Let us miss another time. I'm, I'm strongly advising you to read more and more and more subject verb agreements and even grammatical construction. It helps you, your writing and even your speaking. So you need to access even the internet. So that's my advice. I say to you, thank you very much and goodbye. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته